Peace, King. How you feeling? How you doing, brother? I'm good. Another another beautiful day in paradise. <laughs> All right, right. All is well. All is well. Um, I'm hitting you up. I'm in the motherland right now. I'm on the west side. I'm in Cabo Verde. <laughs> Oh, see, so, so, yeah, so you, you is in paradise, brother. Respect. Yeah, it's lovely out here, man. I want to thank you again. First and foremost, man, you definitely a legend, a pioneer in the Bay Area, the West Coast, hip hop, period, you know, so it's truly an honor. And I appreciate you, Cam. Respect. All right, we're going to get right into Respect. it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Taye Speaks. Uh, for the viewers who may not know who you are, let them know uh, what your name is and definitely let them know where you're from. 100%. My name is Ray Love. I'm from California. I'm from the Bay Area. Um, I got a 30-year history in the entertainment business. Um, I come from a family of entertainers. My grandfather was Cab Calloway. Uh, my mother, my aunts, they were all singers. At about 15 years old, I started off my career left home to to start a, a rap group my first rap partner was tupac and um we started a group called strictly dope within a year we were signed to um to the same label as digital underground and uh, that was the beginning of my career i've also not only that, I've also, you know, I, I worked with Mac Dre. I was the first artist that he got signed to his label way back in shit, probably 91. Uh, Mac Maul is my little brother. Um, man, like you name it, I didn't had a little bit of a hand in it as far as Bay, the Bay Area music scene and hip hop in general. You know, uh, it is my, my first love. It is... Um, it is our way of communicating with each other as black people globally. Um, not to mention, you know, my politics is, you know, I, I'm definitely pan-African in nature. You know what I mean? I, I believe that we are all one people. And um, I, I look forward to doing this interview with you. I, I love where you at and what you're doing and that you're streaming home. Um, and, you know, getting cats over here a little more in tune with Did I lose you? Oh, you breaking up a little bit. Okay. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, yeah, no, no, you good. You know how the internet do sometimes. But wow, oh, yeah, man, you know. you said yeah, you said so much, man. You you had a great career. You didn't uh, change the way that people have made music. You uh, worked with some of the, the most talented and most influential artists in the world. Mac Dre and Tupac, I don't know nobody with greater catalogs and put out more music than them in such a, you know, short time frame and good quality dope. You know what I'm saying? Music at that. But um, 100%. They, both of them was my brothers. Right, right. Man, that's that's powerful, man. These people you knew personally, you know what I'm saying? So many people admire them well. and, and they change people's lives, you know what I'm saying? So let me see. Okay, wow, man, I gotta go back for a second. You said Cab Calloway is your grandfather? Cab Calloway is my grandfather. Um for the for the young ones that might not know, Cab Calloway is the inventor. Him and his circle was the inventors of the concept of what cool meant and cool just meant through it all like you know they went through a lot of struggles black people was going was going through a lot you know and most of that that concept came up during the great depression and um he was the first black artist to go platinum in american history um my great aunt his older sister was the first female lead singer um of of a band lead singer lead performer in a band she was first actually uh, he followed her and then my mother's a singer and my aunts were singers. Um, I actually moved to California with Nat King Cole's um, daughter when I, you know, when I was very young. So I've been around entertainment my entire life. Like it is, um, it's my language, you know, it's how I uh, express myself. It, it's my canvas. It's, it's just, you know, in my family, it's our, uh, 
it's our family business. Wow, man, that's truly amazing. That's a blessing to have that running through your bloodline. Like we're talking about Tupac and Mac Dre, but Cap Calloway, oh, you know, he was way before them. And like you say, he defined cool, he defined stylish. And a lot of that is where hip hop pinched off of, you know what I'm saying? To be real, that jazz and that bebop and that swing. Yeah, okay, okay. I see you got an old soul, man. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 really, it's an unbroken chain from from the the very beginning. You know, even if you look at who my grandfather learned from, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong learned from King Oliver. You know, out of New Orleans. Like, this is something that is um, timeless. You know, for us, it came straight out the the cotton fields and slavery. It came, and it even probably precedes that. It is the way we communicate. Everything from the drums, everything to the cadence, everything to the storytelling. You know what I mean? All of it is precedes uh, us being on this continent. And it has just metastasized, and it has grown to the point where that's why hip-hop is so influential. It's just us being ourselves. You know, it, it's our uh, version of how the Italians got got pizza and they you know they got their art right and, and the you know the germans got the classical and beethoven and the whole thing right well this is our this is our thing this is what we do and i appreciate you breaking that down for sure yeah so i've been to about 70 countries around the world man hip-hop is definitely okay. global and it's one artist I always see. I always see Pac. He on the shirts. He on the, you know, people riding by still playing them. He on the murals on the walls, man. So that lets you know that you was a part of that. You contributed to that. You know what I'm saying? So you Brother, I get I get contact. I get contact contacted from all over Africa from brothers that tell me, like, man, you know, you got family here. We hold you down. We know your story. We, you know, we love Pac. We got love for you and and, you know, anytime, just let us know when you want us, when you need us, you know, and, and my my plan is, you know, I, I definitely want to make it make my way to Africa within the next year. Um, I want to go to Ghana. Um, I want to go really, I, I want to go all over and see the whole variation of, of our people, because here in America, it's e easy to get pigeonholed, right? Like they think that the ghetto is 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 our neighborhood. The ghetto is not our neighborhood. The ghetto is what was left over. Pac said that. And I found it to be true. That is not your culture. That is not who you are for real, for real. That is what someone, the, the caricature that someone wants you to live in. You feel me? And every day I see it more and more. I see it definitely with the younger generation, my sons, my nephews. You know, um, they have a, a, a heightened uh, understanding a little bit more of who we are. And even though we have a lot of problems here, there's a lot of poverty, violence, drug addiction. Even through all of that, they see a picture, the picture clearer than we saw it in, in our generation. You there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. you. That's how you, man. People be trying to call you on the interview. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm be dry yeah, but, all day. but but to be but to be honest with you, it's like, bro, I, I what I love about hip hop is that it's the story of struggle, right? So everybody who there's people struggling all over the world in every culture. Take it outside of black people for a second. Whether you're talking about China, you're talking about India, you're talking about um, uh, Palestine, you know, uh, everybody can relate to fighting back against an oppressive force. You know what I mean? So uh, that's what I do it for. You know, it ain't, ain't too much has changed in me. You know, when I was 15 years old, I was a homeless kid. And that piece of me never died. You know, even with everything that I've done, I've traveled all over the world, everything that I've seen, I still keep that, that realness in me. I'm still connected. I'm not any different from any kid in, in any impoverished situation. You know, uh, even the kids, if you got dirt floors in your house, you know what I mean? If you if you oppressed by the government, you can't go here, you can't go there, and they killing you like they killing us. No, I'm your ally. I stand with you. 
Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. Man, you dropping some gems on them. You've been saying so much. But, yeah, Africa, it is truly beautiful, man. It is actually the most diverse continent in the world, man. It's almost 60 countries in Africa. So I've been to about 15 or 20 of them, and they are totally different. But we usually look at Africa as one place in general, even going from I'm from Cleveland. So going from Cleveland to L.A. to New York or even going to Jamaica or Haiti or Canada, them places is totally different. The people look completely different, different. The food different, the weather different. Yeah. So Africa is the language, times the language. Yeah. Where are you at in Africa right now, bro? Uh, I'm in Cabo Verde. I'm on the west side. Then I'm going to Ghana in December. My man. Yeah, I just got invited to go to, to Ghana um, for December, but I'm not going to be able to make it in December. What I'm looking for is probably realistically sometime in the fall. So just just under a year from now, I'll be I'll have the time and the space and I want to take my children with me and really give them a different perspective, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely life changing. It's, it's a great experience in a lot of uh, countries, including Ghana. They're very safe. Less gun violence, less mass shootings, less violent crimes. You know, they're more peaceful, two, three times more peaceful than, say, like Detroit or New Orleans or St. Louis or somewhere, you know, where we have. A see, lot I've been of living in New Orleans. I, I, I live in, you know, I'm between California, New Orleans. I, I was born in New Orleans. And you're right. It's you know it's a beautiful culture, but you know it's you also get the sense that it's still in America. You know what I mean? So you still have to watch yourself. And I, I'm tired of that. I want to go someplace where I could worry that somebody's gonna take my life just for being black. Oh yeah, most definitely, man. Most definitely.